are here at the yellow booth here at Gen Con 2014, and Matt... You got to say your last name for me. Bona. There you go. Now I didn't mispronounce it. We're going to talk about a lot of the different titles that you've got. You've got six new releases yes. here at Gen Con, and from what I can see, there's something for everyone. Yes, yes. We have, we have uh, games for the family. We have games for expert gamers. Uh, we have... Uh, King of New York for everyone. Uh, we really have a, a lot of different games, so yeah, for everyone. So the first we're going to take a look at here is Knights of the Grand Octopus. And isn't this a little bit of a take on the Cthulhu mythos, Lovecraftian? It's kind of a kind of a fun game. I don't know. I don't know why you would say that. It's just a ground octopus. Something about that octopus just yeah, jumps yeah. out at me. Of course, it's a, it's a fun take on on the Cthulhu myth, uh, and it's um, it's a really light game, a double guessing and bluffing game. So nothing like what we used to see with the, the Cthulhu Love myth. Craft stores. Yes, yeah, but right. but it's but it's really you know fun to to play and to uh, have a different uh, kind of game about this this uh, this genre. And what is the object of Knight of the Grand Octopus? In this game, you play as cultists, okay, uh, that are trying to be the one awakening. Uh, the Great One, or oh, the Grand Octopus. Sorry. Right. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, so to do so, you 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 just entered uh, a school of magic, okay, a university of magic, and you're trying to find the the good component to awaken the Grand Octopus, to be the one who actually awakened the Grand Octopus. Okay. Uh, and to do so, you will use those little wheels here and at the same time all the players will secretly choose where they want to send the cultist okay following the little stairs here on the board so you don't okay okay at the beginning you, you start in the library so you can go you can go everywhere but later on you, you don't have uh, so many choices and where you want to send your offspring okay, <laughs> okay. the offspring gets in the way of the other cultists so you have to try to guess where they, where do they want to go next and so you can block them yes and so when everybody chose you just uh, reveal your choices you move the the pawns around and you look at what happens if you alone in a room you just take a companion okay if there's um, an offspring in the same room as you are, uh, you are terrified, so you lose one cult point here and uh, nothing else happens. You, you can't take a component because there's, uh, there's an offspring here. And if there's no offspring but several cultists, you have to discuss what happens there, okay? So you either agree that nothing happens, okay? Or you agree that one of you will take the components but not the other. Uh, that usually happens when one of the cultists is low on the cult points because if you're out of cult points, you are out of the game. Out of the game, okay. okay. So you don't want that to happen. Or you can also just disagree and then everybody loses one cult points. Okay? Sure. Um, so you can force other players out of the game. Yeah, usually, and, and now usually they, they tend to agree with you to, so you can take the component where they're low on cult points. Points. So that's sure. a that's a good way, a good leverage uh, to have on, on other players. Uh, there's also in every game one of the four outside uh, room that you can go by pointing both arrows at the same space. If you do so, your cultist will teleport there, but you won't be able to place your offspring. Okay. So it's more space for the other players that turn, but you go there. By going there, you will be able to take the silver key component, and you will activate the small power that it has. There's four different, but for example, this one, 
uh, allows you to swap one of the ingredients, the components you already collected, uh, with another one. Okay. Okay. Sure. And that's about it. That's nice. that's fun. That's a lot of interaction between the players. Uh, and so the the player who gets all the components and four, finishes. Sorry, yes, four components out of the six. And they finish first. They have the honor of being eaten by the grand octopus. Yeah. First. Or right. last. I don't know. Right. They awaken them. <laughs> They're cultists. They're expected to die. They, they'll be remembered <laughs> by by the grand octopus for, <laughs> right. for at least two seconds. As a wonderful snack. Yeah. And this is available right now here yes. at Gen Con. Yes. When is it available in stores? Really soon, really soon. I think in, in the next couple of weeks. And the MSRP on Night at the Grand Octopus? I'm sorry, I know I know it in France, but I don't remember it in, in the US. That's okay. But I think it's, I'll find it now and include it. I, I, I think it's 40 or 35. Okay. So, but I, I don't know the currency, but the so that's okay. Of, of 35. So this is only so, one of the the six new releases you've yep. got. So let's move on and talk about the next one. Let's do that. Christian Lemay is going to join us, and we're going to talk about a couple of the the smaller card games that are available as well. So the first one is Friday the Thirteenth, which is a Reiner Knizia design. Yes. And am I mistaken? Is this is this a previous design that's rethemed? Absolutely. So this game was known earlier as Poison or Baker's Dozen. Okay. And now we do it with the new theme, which is Bad Luck. Because you know bad luck is bad, so you have to avoid it. Uh, yes, that's why it's called Bad Luck, of course. So uh, you shuffle all the cards and you distribute evenly between all the players. It's a three to six players, ages eight and up. Okay. On your turn, you choose one card in your hand and you place it in the appropriate pile. So, for example, you place this cat card with the other cat card. You've dropped the, the number four yep. cat card on top of the number seven cat theme cards. So that's 11 now. There is no stack for the red cards. They are, they are wild cards, so you can okay. play it anywhere. And if you ever play a card that make a pile go over 13, you have to collect all the cards that are in that pile, but the card you play stays at the center of the table. All the regular cards you you collect are worth one bad luck point, and you remember bad luck is That's bad. Yeah, so you don't want those. And worse, the red cards are worth two bad luck points. So basically, you don't want to collect cards. The trick is that at the end of the round, when everyone played all their cards, you check to see which player collected the most mirror card. Most and, mirror card. And okay. that mirror and that player will discard all his mirror cards. So he scores zero for that suit, which is great for him. We do the same thing for the cap card and the ladder cards, but not for the Friday the 13th card. So in this game, you either want to not collect anything or have at least more than any other player. Right. And that's it. Okay. So it's a very, very simple rule. Your grandma can play it with no sure. problem. But if you're a card gamer, you'll see that since you have all your cards in hand at the beginning of the round, you can plan your strategy. I will try to collect this. I will avoid this. And there's a lot of meat in it. Nice. And then you've got another card game another that we're going to talk game. about. So, what do we have here? And that is Think Again by uh, well-known designer Bruno Catala mm -hmm. uh, and Ludovic Maublanc. They did Mr. Jack together, Psychodies, Dice Town, which is well-known games. Yes. So now they've done a party game. So Think Again is a funny trivia game where you have to give wrong answers quickly. And it will be harder than you think. So you give wrong answer. Sometimes wrong, sometimes right answer. So it's a three to ten player, so you can play with large groups. And each player will be the reader for five questions. It's a trivia game. Mm -hmm. So when you ask a question, you always show a sign, the sign of the next card on back on the next card on the stack. Because each card has 
six questions on one side and on the other side a sign that will tell you if you got to give a right or a wrong answer to the question. Okay. Three signs tell you to give right answer. The green dot, the right world, word, and the Bruno Catala genius. Three signs tell you to give wrong answer. The red square, the wrong word, and the Ludovic Moblin dance. <laughs> so for example, if I ask you what what color are the Smurfs and I show you this, you will answer me. Then I would have to say that they're green. Green, correct. But you gotta be faster than cameraman and everyone else in the crowd. I right. think they were faster than you. Probably. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the back of the card, so <laughs> and I had to look. And if I ask you with what kind, uh, with, with which utensil do you usually cut your meat? A knife. Yeah, and I showed you right, so you gave me a right answer. So with one person, it's really easy, but when you're competing with other players, it becomes very tricky. Yes. So it's very funny, very light, very quick. Yes. Oh, I think you'll enjoy it. Very nice. Christian, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. See you. So the next title we're going to take a look at is Zombie 15, which I believe was a Kickstarter project, wasn't it? It was, it was a successful Kickstarter campaign. Yes, very nice. And my understanding is it is, obviously enough, a zombie game, but it plays in real time, and you have 15 minutes yes, what, you need to survive. You know, what the designers wanted to do here was to recreate the tension that the heroes of a zombie movie or, or you when you play a, a zombie video game you can feel you know it's it's a it's something you don't really have on other zombie board game because you have time to you know say oh the zombies come from here oh maybe I'll, I'll go there what do you want to do here you don't have time for that you have to play really fast if you want to succeed okay uh, so let me show you a bit how it's played. Obviously, what we have here is not what's in the box. Obviously. The giant version, but it's pretty similar. Just, just imagine smaller tiles in 2D. Um, so you play, it's a cooperative game. You play a, a bunch of teenagers because all the adults turned into zombies overnight. You don't know why. And you're basically trying to survive. The game uh, is based on scenarios. There's 15 scenarios scenarios in the in the main campaign and all the scenarios are, are, are different the two first scenarios actually teach you the, the, the rules of the game uh, and it's cooperative in real time but all the players don't play uh, at the same time they take turns playing that's sure. that's important while you 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 it's your turn the other players can still help you with you know handling the cards and the zombies but they have to respect the fact that it's your turn it's your okay turn, right um, at your turn you have four actions okay those actions can be moving moving from a tile to another or moving outside or inside uh, a building is another action um, this could be also a Obviously, you cannot leave a, a zone, an, an area where there is zombies. You have to, to kill them first. Okay. That's important. Um, the second type of, of action you can do is searching. When you are in uh, inside, in a search zone, in a building, and there's no zombie around, you can search. There's two ways of searching, and this is one thing I, I love about this game, is that the designers uh, came up with, with simple rules, but that that's it, that they are easy to remember even when there's a tension of, of the uh, of the time limit but also uh, rules that are really um, that they really give you what you expect from a zombie game so there are two two ways of searching you can either you know uh, dash into a building and ransack the place you just take three cards uh, out of the the search pile okay and you will add as many zombies as the numbers on the on the zombie card you you drew okay so you are allowed you attract zombies okay but you get to take all the other cards in your inventory there's limitation in your inventory you cannot you can only have one heavy weapon uh, and one small weapon or two small weapons uh, and one item in your backpack 
uh, but the other cards you put them in the discard and that's important because the second way to, to search is to enter carefully being really silent take one item that you really want and then get out to do so you go through the discard pile and one at a time you decide if you want to keep the card or remove it from the game as soon as you take one card it stops and so do you put the rest of the cards back down into the yes. discard pile yes sure so you can you can really choose what you what you get you are sure not to um, draw more zombies on the board but it's also much slower because you have to you know decide for each right. instead of drawing three and so this is for searching. The third type of action, obviously, is fighting zombies. Yes. To do so, you choose one of your weapons. Uh, and let me oh, show you. One of your weapons here, OK. You deplete its condition or its ammo one square to the left. And you remove as many zombies from your area that yeah. the attack value here okay okay so you can you can remove three zombies from from where you are by using the, the guitar for example okay um, obviously you can you can uh, attack several times or move several times you have four actions you you use them as you want something that you expect from a zombie game is that when you use firearms you run out of ammo you run out of, of, of ammo and you attract more zombies you know yes. the, the the noise attracts zombies sure. so whenever you use a firearms or a weapon that has one here okay one of the zombies that you remove from the board will go in the zombie box hard box okay so you just it's also really quick to do you know you just take the zombie there's one you can throw it in a in the box and the other one in the in the pool um, and then you forget about it for now you just keep playing but it's important for the for the for later in the game what you want to do uh, at the end of your turn there's two things really important things that you have to do is check if you can fend off the zombies that are in the same spot as you so you choose one of your weapon and you look at the the little stop number here right. the, the defense value if the number of zombies in your spots are lower or equal to this number you're safe you can you can you know fend, fend them up right if uh, it's higher if there's more zombies that, than this value uh, they attack you and you lose one health and uh, your figures go down and you have to spend one action on your next turn to, to get it up again Stand back up right okay get up yes so basically you lose one action and, and one uh, health point okay um, so you have to, to check that uh, at the end of your turn and the next thing you want to do is say clear and loud next it's important because we have to know uh, exactly whose turn it is at any time in a game because you only have a short period of time yes. you can't waste and a lot of time this this short period of time is uh, tracked by the the soundtrack there's a soundtrack a 15 minute soundtrack that increase in tension you know so you, you know you know the game is almost over and you, you have to to rush even more and every minute uh, there's a zombie roll on this on this uh, soundtrack this means that new zombies arrive on the board you just draw a zombie card they are number from one to four and that's the number of zombies you have to add on the board in the street of the tile of the active player okay so the, what I love about this rule is that if you are short on ammo on elf you have even more tension because you don't want the growl to to be heard right. w when you want it to so, be the next player yeah, when that it, growl happens and it's just you know I, i've never been into the zombie apocalypse before but i think it would feel that way if if you have a lot of ammo and a full health you're a little you know more more okay than if right more confident that if you are low on ammo and and already hurt so sure um and in this tag there's also cards that say 
You remember the, the horde box I told you about? So I'm going to take a guess at all the zombies that you all put the on the side yes. now go into that tile so of the you, active if, player. If you, if you want before, like Rumbo style with uh, machine guns and you, you, you get, were able to get rid of a lot of zombies, but a lot of zombies went into the box. So you can have like 15 or 20 zombies coming in the in the board. Suddenly appear, yes. Yeah, at the same time because they were drawn by by the firearms. And in that case, you really have to to go and help your your little friend uh, because if not, if the game is a cooperative game, so if one uh, dies or getting unconscious. Uh, you can still carry it to the exit point, sure. but if you don't, you, we all lose. You all you know, lose. Okay. You know, it's 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 one. You ca you cannot left someone behind. Okay. And everyone has to make it to the exit point for, 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 for to the, win. For the scenarios with an exit point, but okay. some some have as other other objective like uh, finding gasoline for a car or holding a strong strong uh, place for 15 minutes okay. or so on. Sure. The, the, the 15 scenarios really tell a story and it's the story of these teenagers who try to understand what happens and who try basically to survive. Yes. And Zombie 15 is out right now here at Gen Con. Is, is this in stores yet? Uh, it should be. We, we are still waiting to um, send it to all of our backers for, for before, yeah, before we, we send it to the, the retailers. At least it, what our, our distributors should, should do. So it's, That's right. It, it's, but it, it's um, currently being shipped to, to the backers in the US. So the game should be in stores in the next couple of weeks. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Excellent. And what a fantastic job you've done with the uh, diorama set. Matt, you did all this personally, no, didn't no. you? No, no, I didn't. And I'm, I, I was looking forward to Zombie 15 because I had I'd heard a bit about it, and it sounds like a very cool game that's very easy to get into. Yes, and I think it's um, it's really a new take on, on the zombie genre. It's... Uh, it's it's fun. There's a lot of tension. It's fast. Uh, some people have been asking about the the setup time. The setup time it gets really shorter the the, the most you play and and really when you finish a scenario, it's also good to have maybe maybe four or five minutes, you know, to let your your heart take a breath. yeah take a breath and let your heart heart pace. Uh, slow, um, so so, yeah. That's really a lot of tension in the game. Excellent. Matt is back, and we are so worn out from looking at all the great titles at Yellow that we decided to sit down for this one. But we're gonna take a look at what's pretty much your big release. Everybody's gathered around, all saying, "No, you're sold out today. There's more tomorrow." King of New York, which is a follow-up to Richard Garfield's King of Tokyo. Yes, it is, and. And then, before I explain you art is different from King of Tokyo, I'm going to explain you art is similar. Because Richard Garfield used the same core rules. Uh, and by that I mean the same King of the Hill system. Here, the, the Tokyo is Manhattan, actually. Uh, he used also six dice. You have three rows of, the, of those dice at your turn. Obviously, it's the same theme. You know, we are playing monsters. We are monsters trying to take over our city. Um, but then there's also a lot of differences. To begin with, the board, you know, has five different boards uh, in New York that the player can, can go in. And uh, actually, you will never be off the board. You are always some, somewhere in New York or in this place. Um, so, at the end of the turn, just before you get a chance to buy cards, you have uh, the opportunity to move. Either uh, you get damage and Manhattan is empty, then you have to, to go in, just like in Tokyo, in King of Tokyo. Or, if not, you can choose where to go uh, between the, the, the four other districts. Um, the, the only limitation is that if there's already two monsters, in the district, you cannot go there. Okay. Okay. Maximum two, two uh, There's only so much room yes. in that burrow. Um, at the beginning of the game, 
we place three stacks of three buildings in each of these districts. These buildings are actually those that you will be able to destroy during the game. You are a, a huge bomb engine monster, so you want to destroy buildings. That's what you do, right? And for gamers who don't like New York, this might be a, a fun way to take out a little of their frustration. I, I won't comment on that. I like New York. I have no problem. I love New York. So, um, how do you how do you destroy buildings? You destroy buildings with a new symbol, a new icon on the dice. The dice, they, have, they still have the, the, the attack, the close, the attack, the heart to heal, and the, the lightning for energy. Those work exactly the same way as in King of New York. But there are three new uh, sides on it, uh, on it. The first one is the destruction symbol. The little rock and ash building, yeah. So if you roll one, you can destroy a little building with a one on it. Okay. If you, if you roll two, you can destroy a building with a two on it. And if you roll three, you can destroy a building with a three on it. Of course, you can choose. You can choose to destroy two ones instead of one two. You do whatever you want. You send them the way you want. When you destroy a building, you immediately get the reward that is on. So the high rises give you DP. Uh, the hospitals give you health and the plant factory, the power plant part, sorry, give you energy, okay? They all come in small, medium or large size, giving you one, two or three of them, okay? Um, but, but whenever you destroy a building, you don't remove from the board, you flip it over like this, and it calls from, it calls from a military unit to protect the city. So the more building you, you destroy in, uh, in the district, the more military prison you get there. Uh, the military units are destroyed the same way uh, as uh, the building. There's a little number here. It's always a bit harder to, to destroy, so to fight. So all the building with a two will be protected by a jet with a three. Uh, all building with a three by a tank with a four. It's really hard to destroy a tank. And all building with a one will be uh, will turn into uh, infantry what two of them. Um, and when you destroy a military, you also get a little reward. So it's always interesting to roll the stuff. No, not military units. They, they want they want you know sit back and watch you destroy the city. They want to fight back. So let me set up a little example here. Uh, let's say... Okay. We have Kong and... and Captain Fish in the Queen and Mantis, and Mantis in Manhattan and, and Sheriff here in the Bronx. Okay. There's one unit in Manhattan and two units in the Queen. I'm playing, I'm playing with Captain Fish, right? Let's say, Let's say I just roll, at the end of my three rolls, I have one, I call that ouch symbol. I have one ouch. Then, then the two units in the queen will attack me and will deal one damage each. So I'll take two damage. That's not a good thing. Now if I roll two of them, two ouch. Uh, they will still attack me and then do that, but they will also attack Kong with in the same distance. No, let's say I am sure if I roll one or two out of my mind, there's no unit in the ground. That if I roll three, I will activate all the units on the board and they will attack the monster which are uh, in the same district. So I will deal two damage to Kong and Captain Fish and one Mantis here in Manhattan. And I can combine, I can combine that with the cloud. So if I roll two clouds and three of those, I would deal three to Mantis because of the unit. And so that's a, a, a new way to do damage is to mount it all around the world. You're actually so having the military to help you. Exactly. Yeah. And if you do so, you get to get even get to war. Because each time you roll three out of you can take one of the two gold cards 